Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, it's six o'clock this Sunday, March 13th. We're gonna be checking in with Mike Coast Ridge in just a few moments for our forecast. But first, several major crashes overnight right here in San Antonio. Three of them turned out deadly. We're gonna get straight to the latest. Jonathan Cotto joining us live right now with the details. Jonathan, what do we know? Good morning, Max. Busy morning for San Antonio police investigating these fatal crashes. Information is limited, but this is what we know. On the west side, two drivers claiming to have had the green light when crossing an intersection of Petrenko near 151. Police say the driver of a black pickup truck T-boned the driver of a silver vehicle who was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. This happening close to 2 o'clock this morning. The passenger inside the silver vehicle was pronounced dead at the scene. They say both drivers will be evaluated for driving under the influence. Either one or both could be facing charges. And a wrong way driver on the city's northwest side hit another vehicle head on on Bandera at uh, Bandera Road at Ford's Landing. Police along with EMS were called out to the scene close to 1.30 this morning. They say the wrong way driver died on impact. The driver of the other vehicle was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Max, San Antonio police also investigating a couple shootings happening last night. We'll bring you the latest coming up on GMSA. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. And as you saw Jonathan wearing a jacket out there, it is because we are starting the morning off yep. cold. My yesterday, we started off at 27, so. 26, actually. 26. 26. Oh, my goodness. So 32 is a little nice to start today. But we'll still drop down, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a couple of more degrees. Got clear skies, dry air. Um, so it, it is that type of cold where it doesn't really seep down the back of your neck like that damp chill. But, yeah, it's, it's starting cold out there. And then a huge warm-up throughout the day. So it's going to be just another fantastic day today. And of course, the sun's going to be coming up an hour later. And of course, remember to set your clocks ahead before you went to bed last night. Uh, right now, temperature 31 here in town. A lot of freezing readings all around the area. 28 burning stage. Kerrville's down to 24 and a little bit milder up there in Canyon Lake. But yeah, it is definitely a cold one. And as far as the allergens, everything is still on the low side. Even oak remains on the low side, even as we start to get into the uh, oak season a little bit more. And then 56 today, a new big, big warm up. So we are going to be gaining a good 35 in some cases close to 40 degrees. It will be somewhat on the breezy side and over the next couple of days we're going to have to watch it with the really dry air because we have another shot of uh, another surge of dry air coming in here as we go into about uh, late Monday night Tuesday and we're going to have to watch out for the fire danger especially out to the west but today is going to be just sensational. Enjoy it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. Now to the latest in Ukraine and the Russian forces continuing to close in on the country's capital. Breaking news from just a few moments ago, a missile strike ending with at least 35 dead at a Ukrainian military base. President Zelensky saying that he wants more help and President Biden pledging more aid plus dramatic video from inside the country. Russian tanks firing at an apartment building. As ABC's Karina Mitchell reports, this all comes as a growing number of refugees continue to try and escape this chaos. As Russian forces continue their invasion, more people are leaving Ukraine. The country's prime minister says about 13,000 people were evacuated Saturday, more than two and a half million since the war began. A defiant president, Volodymyr Zelensky, warning the Russians they'll have to carpet bomb Kyiv and kill all of its residents if they want to take the city, saying, quote, if that is their goal, let them come. Ukrainians unwavering in their resolve. We will fight from every basement. They will lose tanks every Every street, every block, every crossroad. In the city of Mariupol, Russian tanks marked with a Z bombarding residential areas. This apartment building hit in this hospital corridor, an unspeakable loss. Anastasia losing one of her children, holding the one that survived. I don't know where to run to, she says. Who will bring back our children? Who? <sighs> President Biden authorizing another $200 million in military aid to Ukraine, including small arms and large weapons, as well as more anti-armor and anti-aircraft systems. As concern grows, Vladimir Putin may resort to a chemical weapons attack if he fails to make significant gains on the ground. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis continues to grow. Ukrainian women and children finding dozens of strollers at this train station in Poland donated by local families. Refugees fleeing to the neighboring countries of Hungary and Moldova and crossing the border to Romania by ferry. The situation really, I can't speak without... Uh, <laughs> 
tears. I'm sorry, but I'm really sorry for my country. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, Iraqi and U.S. officials say as many as 12 missiles hit near a U.S. consulate complex in Iraq. They believe the missiles were likely launched from Iran. Luckily, no injuries reported in the attack. But this does mark a significant escalation between the United States and Iran. Hostility between the longtime foes has often played out in Iraq, whose government is allied with both of our nations. All right, severe weather wreaking havoc on the East Coast and a big change for children arriving at the Texas border coming from Mexico. RJ Marquez joining us this morning in studio with some of our headlines. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, Max. And starting out there with immigration news where the Biden administration partially ended a Trump era policy for children arriving at the Texas Mexico border. So the CDC ended part of a public health order related to unaccompanied minors. The order largely barred migrants from seeking asylum in the US using a pandemic emergency rule. The Biden administration had already exempted minors, but a court ruling in Texas last week would have forced these children to possibly leave. The CDC supports its decision by citing a number of protocols to reduce the spread of COVID-19 among migrant children traveling alone. All right, now to some news involving future elections. Democrats are discussing moving away from having Iowa caucuses being the first presidential vote. The DNC held its winter meetings in Washington, D.C., and party officials hinted at some major changes to the presidential nominating calendar. Democrats want to move more to more diverse and competitive states to earlier in the nomination process to favor primaries over caucuses. Critics, critics say the caucus system is not accessible enough to the average voter and has become completely outdated. Democrats could make a final decision this summer. And people this morning in the south and east coast dealing with a late winter storm moving through several states and causing all sorts of problems. This storm is dumping snow from Louisiana up through the northeast parts of Virginia, Georgia and Florida had tornado warnings. Check out this water spout right there in Fort Myers where people had to run for cover as it moved onto the beach and tens of thousands of people do not have power this morning as well from Florida all the way up to Pennsylvania where more snow is expected. Hundreds of flights have also been canceled or delayed because of this weather. So keep that in mind if you plan to fly out anywhere. So busy spring break week and weekend and hopefully people there are being safe and uh, not too caught up there at airports. Nice. All right, RJ Marquez, thank you so much. Thank you. Time now, just about 608, 32 degrees out. And RJ is not going anywhere because we are talking about the Spurs last night. Oof, coming off the record historic win. What do they do with the Pacers? We're gonna check in with RJ in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Taking a live look out there. It looks calm and quiet, but it is cold, Mike Ozerhage. I gotta ask, are we almost done seeing freezes like this to start the morning? Well, this is uh, a little bit Lamar of an exception that because familiar. the average is last freeze is, um, what'd you say, direct, or producer? Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I thought, you know, little messages on a Sunday morning. Uh, the average last freeze is February 24th. So yes, we are way past that. The latest we've ever hit freezing here in town is on uh, April 3rd. So yeah, could still happen historically, but more than likely it's not going to. 31 right now in town, got a lot of 20s out there as well. And that top number, dew points down to 20, which means the air is very, very dry. We hardly have a bit of a breeze. There's a couple of very, very high clouds out there. So with that situation, we've got the good radiational cooling uh, setting up here and I think we dropped down a couple of more notches before it's all said and done. It is going to be a beautiful sunrise once it oh darn it my little picture didn't show up there. Anyway, let's take a look at the live cam right now and it will be eventually a beautiful sunrise once the sun decides to finally come up because of course it's coming up an hour later this morning at 746 but then it's gonna be setting about 20 minutes until eight. So yes, daylight saving time, and this is in effect. We can start the countdown now if you don't like it. First weekend of November is when we set the clocks back again. So not a fan of daylight saving time personally. All right, again, temperatures around the area. It's pretty cold up there, especially in the Hill Country. 20 in uh, Comfort, 24 Kerrville, and then a lot of freezing readings. Most everybody is freezing this morning as opposed to being above freezing. And of course, one of the reasons we've got this bone dry air, and that's going to be kind of an issue later on today, especially. Uh, we're still gonna keep some low humidity around here, somewhat of a breeze, especially out to the west. We're gonna have to really watch it for the uh, high fire danger. There's nothing formal posted yet, but just kind of keep an eye out for that, especially out to the west. And that's going to be the situation the next couple of days. Now, tonight, we are going to start to see we have a, a 
primarily southerly breeze today. The wind is going to start to pick up as we go into the overnight hours, so the humidity is going to be coming up. So that combined with some more clouds moving on in here is going to help to keep temperatures up. We're not going to be as cold tomorrow morning, still jacket weather and then a huge warm up throughout the day. Here comes the next front. This is going to be coming through tomorrow night into Tuesday, and it's not going to be a huge blast of cold air, but it's going to bring this dry air in here. So what humidity tries to return tomorrow is going to get pushed away as that front moves on through. It could try to squeeze out a couple of showers tomorrow night, mainly off to the east, a shower, even a thunderstorm. Here's some of the clouds that we have around here in the morning hours, and then we clear on out. Here's the front that's moving on through here. Again, a couple of showers fleeting, just passing by very, very quickly, and that's pretty much going to be about it. And then behind that, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, we have some very dry air. So that's going to mean cooler mornings around here. We'll be getting down into the uh, 40s, even low 40s by Wednesday, starting to rebound somewhat by the end of the week. And then high temperatures are definitely going to be on the warm side. So with that very dry air, then you have the huge spans from the low to the high. So we are going to be, instead of being on the below normal side, which was the case most last week, we are going to be about... Oh, anywhere from say five to 10 degrees above normal on average. So the forecast around here today, we are going to be making it up to 56 degrees at noon. It is going to be breezy today. Plenty of sunshine, though. Just a really, really good looking day. And we are going to be warmer than yesterday. Yesterday, we uh, stuck around right around the mid 50s. Today, we get up to uh, 64 degrees, still on the shy side of normal by almost 10 degrees. Now, tomorrow, it's not going to be as cool in the morning with some clouds around here. We keep a few clouds throughout the day. Then that front moves through tomorrow night. It may try to squeeze out, you know, one or two showers primarily off to the east, and then it pulls in drier air. So high temperatures really won't go, you know, that far down a few degrees, but it's the low temperatures that will be nice and cool. So jackets in the morning won't need them in the afternoon. Of course, Thursday is St. Patty's Day. Gotta wear green. Yep. And it is St. Paddy's Day. Oh. I learned that, not St. Patty's Day. Okay. With double D. So. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's kind of it's funny because it's like a tale of two different spring breaks. Mm -hmm. The first spring break that people had last week <laughs> was like winter, and then yeah. we get beautiful spring. You need a coat. You need flip flops. You need a heavy coat. This week is going to be, like I said, yeah, cool in the morning, but then beautiful in the afternoon. So, not a heck of a lot of rain. I mean, that's getting to be a problem right. though. So that withstanding. All right, Mike Ozerich, thank you so much. Time now, 6.15, 32 degrees out. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA. RJ Marquez back in the studio with this morning's sports. We got Spurs, high school basketball, and the latest on a big move by the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. The silver and black back on the court after Coach Pop's big night the other night, but missing three starters against the Indiana Pacers at the AT&T Center. It didn't seem to matter early on. Check out Doug McDermott cutting his way through the defense for a lay-in. San Antonio leads this one early 6-0 to zero. later in the quarter. Josh Primo, good to see him back, hits Jock Lendell for the two-handed jam, and we're tied at 15-all. But the Pacers find some separation late in the frame. They end up leading 34-26 to 26 after one. Get to the second quarter. Look at Devin Vassell flying in there for a one-handed dunk to give the Spurs some much-needed energy. Then a little later, the Rook, Primo, hits Kata Bates Diop for the dunk. Spurs attacking the rim, but they are still trailing 71-64 at the break. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. Spurs trying to rally down 15 for a straight, second straight night. And look at El Quattro right here. Lonnie Walker hits down a triple to cut the lead to 11. A few minutes later, Josh Richardson comes up with a big play. The steal right there. And flips it ahead to Landale for another slam on the break. But Indianapolis, the Pacers, just a little too much. They end up beating the San Antonio 119 to 108. Uh, I think we worked hard. We weren't, we weren't really that sharp. Uh, you know, we didn't shoot very well. Uh, just weren't very sharp. But we worked hard, didn't give in, just didn't play well. Bottom line, it happens. All right, Coach Pop, maybe a little exhausted there after Friday night. Uh, the Spurs homestand continues tomorrow night against Minnesota with tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. 
All right, taking it to some high school hoops now, the UIL Class 3A state title game at the Alamo Dome in a matchup two years in the making. Cole versus Cole, that is Shaq's alma mater, taking on Dallas Madison at the Dome. The Cougars trailed by 10 at halftime, but they take control in the third quarter. Check out my man James Livingston right there, hitting a big three-pointer. They cut the lead down to two, 35-33. Trey Blackmore gets a triple from the wing, and the Cougars take their first lead, 40-37. to They're up by one, heading to the fourth quarter. Back and forth game we go here. Nice shot right there. Cougars have a 51 to 48 lead with a minute and 37 seconds left to play, but Dallas Madison scores the next five points of this game, including a three from one of their players, Latrell Wright, to give them a two point lead with 18 seconds left on the clock. So Cole had a chance to win this game at the buzzer. They ended up missing a step back three and the Cougars come up short in their bid to repeat 53 51 the final from the dome. Got around my first man, another man stepped up, saw the clock, there's about two seconds left. Um, I knew we needed a three, so I went for it and uh, missed it. I thought it was a great game. I thought, you know, um, they jumped out to a lead early. Uh, I thought we, you know, we battled back. I mean, that's, what, that's what great teams do. Um, just, you know, they made a couple more plays at the end. We worked hard all season. We made it this far. Teams don't usually make it this far. And I know the fans got our back. and. My teammates got our back, so even though we didn't get the first place like we wanted, we still got the second place. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to the Cole Cougars. I'm sure Shaq is very proud of them. They end their remarkable season with a 32-9 and overall record. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, big moves of the Cowboys. Offense is going to look a little different next year. Dallas agreed to trade wide receiver Amari Cooper and a sixth-round pick to the Cleveland Browns in exchange for a fifth and sixth-round pick in this year's NFL draft. ESPN's Adam Schefter broke this news. Cooper had production that ranked in the top ten in the NFL in targets, receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. You see him making a couple big plays there. There were signs that Dallas, though, was ready to part ways with Cooper last offseason when they decided not to restructure his contract. With Cooper now gone, CeeDee Lamb likely becomes Dak Prescott's top target. All right, there's a lot to a lot to break yeah. down here, RJ. Uh, you want to start with the Spurs, <laughs> the Cowboys? My producer's like, you got 30 seconds. So Okay, I, I think Spurs, look, they, okay. they I figured that after Friday night's game, they were just going to maybe rest a couple of guys. Cowboys, though, interesting move there because I think they're having to make up for the mistake of signing, giving Zeke that big contract. Yeah, the big question is, how is Amari Cooper only really worth a fifth-round pick? I think they had to do anything they could to get any sort of compensation back from him. It seemed like they were going to either have to release him or basically straight up cut him and just take basically the cap hit. So, yeah, they had to do whatever they could. On to Cleveland goes Amari. And it's funny because you and I were actually talking yesterday when the trade went down, and you said the most ironic part is that they gave up, the Cowboys gave up, First round pick. Yeah, they gave up a lot when uh, the then Raiders, they were in Oakland at the time. So they gave up a lot to get him and ended up not even being able to keep him. And again, Zeke is going to get paid 18 million. Dak, I think, is like 40 million. So there goes that money that could have gone to Amari. Now, I guess CD Lamb becomes the guy there at Big D. All right. Yeah. RJ Marquez, thank you so much. Thanks. Time so. now, 624, 32 degrees. Got a lot more to come here on GMSA. The latest gas prices end tips that you can use to save money. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday. Let's take a look at the latest gas prices. According to AAA, the national average is $4.33. Here in Texas, it's just about $4. And in San Antonio, the average coming in at $3.98. Here's the thing. It's almost 50 cents more than what we saw just a week ago. We understand a lot of people are feeling the pain at the pump, so that is why we have some tips to help you out, help you get the most mileage out of your gas. We have the web story up right now. It also helps you find the cheapest gas in town. Just head to ksat.com. Time now, just about 628, 32 degrees out. A lot more on GMSA. A lot of overnight breaking news, deadly crashes, and also two deadly shootings. Jonathan Coto joining us live with the details. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 6.31 this morning, March 13th. 
I got to tell you, Mike, it is March. We're mid-March. It feels more like January, early February this morning. Oh, yeah. When temperatures are down, uh, most everybody is freezing right now. Of course, yesterday we hit 26. I don't think we hit that today, but we're going to be, I'm going for down in the upper 20s. Ooh. We got, I mean, look at, we got clear skies out there right now. Hardly any breeze, really, really dry air, and that means it's going to warm up. We only mustered mid-50s yesterday. Still, it was a great boy. If, you, if you're in the shadows, it's like, oh, my goodness, it's kind of chilly. And then you got out in the sunshine. It was absolutely fantastic, and that's the way it's going to be again today. And we're going to have a, a beautiful sunrise, but it's not going to be coming up for about another well, hour, hour and 15 minutes or so, right around there after the uh, the time change. And temperatures, again, a lot of, I mean, once again, a good hard freeze in many areas uh, up in the hill country. Balverde, New Braunfels down to 28 right now, and even 27 at Port SA. Light amounts of allergens, and of course, the updated count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. Morning. As far as uh, yeah, clear and just cold this morning. If you're heading off to early church services, make sure you do bundle up. And then later on today, it's going to be kind of iffy with the jacket. Stay in the shadows. Going to be on the cool side. Sunny. It will be breezy as well. Beautiful. Huge warm up. We're going to be gaining about 35, close to 40 degrees in some cases. Now tomorrow it's going to be slightly more humid. Humidity is going to start to come back in tonight. A couple of showers going to be possible late tomorrow night. There's another front that's moving on through here. This is not really, yes, by definition, it's a cold front, but it doesn't really have that much colder air in behind it. It's much drier air. So what that means then is that will allow low temperatures to be on the coolish side and then very warm afternoons. Good looking week. Of course, downside is no rain in the forecast other than maybe a stray shower tomorrow night, which is not going to amount to too awfully much. But yeah, I've got some beautiful weather coming up this week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, tough night for San Antonio police, first responders, and a lot of local families. Overnight, four people dead, two in deadly crashes. As we mentioned earlier in the show, we also have two deadly shootings. Jonathan Goto joining us live once again with those situations. Jonathan, what do we know? Max, San Antonio police investigating those shootings. I can tell you these are both separate incidents, but both happening just within minutes of each other. This is what we know right now. Shots rang east side of downtown. San Antonio police responding to a home on Lamar Street at 1131 last night. Inside that home, a man found shot in the living room. The suspect involved in the shooting, who was still inside the home when police arrived, was taken into custody and is pending charges. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. In about five minutes earlier on the city's west uh, northwest side police responding to the aftermath of a heated argument between two men they say one man pulled a gun and shot the other this all happening at a strip center uh, 410 near Ingram Road across the highway from Ingram Park Mall police say the man involved in that shooting took off in a white car both cases right now are being investigated we'll keep you updated as more information is made available reporting live Jonathan Cotto case at 12 news Thank you, Jonathan. Other top stories we're following this morning. We now know the name of the man who was killed during an attempted carjacking outside a West Side restaurant late last night. The medical examiner's office identifying the man who was killed at his 48-year-old Juan Medina. We'll take a look. All this happened just before 8.30 last night. This is the Good News Burgers, formerly known as Papa's Burgers, on Southwest 36th Street near Cashoville Road. Police on the scene telling us Medina was leaving the restaurant. Two men approached him with a gun, tried to steal his truck. A fight ensued, and that is when one of the men shot Medina multiple times. The suspects took off without Medina's truck before officers arrived. At last check, still no arrests have been made. We now also know the name of the man who was killed in a motorcycle crash yesterday morning on 281 near Bitters. And we first told you about this crash yesterday on GMSA. The motorcyclist now identified as 45-year-old Salvador Tirado of Pipe Creek in Bandera County. Police say Tirado was going northbound on 281. That's when an SUV hit the motorcycle from behind. Tirado was thrown from the bike. He died on the scene. And the woman driving the SUV that hit him, telling police the bike looked like it may have stalled or slowed down right in the middle of the highway and she could not avoid the crash. Alcohol does not seem to be a factor, and right now there are no charges pending. All right, a couple of traffic alerts that you need to know of this morning. Two closures happening today, one on the southwest side, one on the north side. First, there will be rolling lane closures of I-35 just south of 410 as CPS energy crews do some utility work. Traffic will be stopped intermittently between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. in 15-minute intervals. Then on the north side, Textot is going to be having the eastbound 1604 flyover ramp to northbound 281 close from 7 a.m. 
to 5 p.m. for construction. Traffic will be detoured to the front of road, so make sure you plan accordingly if you plan to be driving in either of those areas. As you probably know, we are seeing record gas prices and we are seeing the highest level of inflation that we've seen in 40 years. So there are so many questions. How is this going to impact your family, not only here, but across the country? That is why this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., we have a specialist with Victory Capital. They're joining us live to discuss what led us to these situations. What do these numbers actually mean for you and for your family? And what comes next? If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can still submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and join us today at 8 a.m. All right, a big debate over a bill to ban certain books in Texas schools. It's heating up at the state capitol and why your next Uber ride might cost you more in the very near future. RJ Marquez is back with us live this morning. RJ? Yeah, Max, cannot escape uh, surging gas prices and also more for Uber rides. So we'll talk about that here in just a bit. But uh, we start up the road in Austin with the debate over books in Texas public schools. Books on race and sexuality are di disappearing from Texas schools in record numbers as Governor Greg Abbott calls for the prosecution of anyone deemed to be supplying a minor with inappropriate material. The governor tapped the Texas Education Agency to investigate what he calls pornographic books in schools. Advocates against this push back at a rally outside the state capitol calling the move censorship. This is all called the Parental Bill of Rights and Abbott says it will amend the Texas Constitution, making it clear that parents are the primary decision makers with their children. Teachers are also speaking up though to make sure they have a voice under this bill. Educators that provide access to these materials could lose their credentials and be placed on the do not hire list. Okay, switching gears a bit. It's not just drivers feeling the pain at the pump. We all are. Uber users are also about to see a gas surcharge on their bills. The rideshare company says it is rolling out a temporary, temporary fuel fee to offset record high gas prices. So this will apply to rides and Uber Eats delivery starting on March 16th. That's coming up this week. The money will go directly to drivers. That's some good news there. You can expect to pay up to 45 cents on each Uber Eats order or up to 55 cents per ride. Uber will reevaluate the surcharge in 60 days. All right, so the traditional St. Patrick's Day parade made its return to Milwaukee Saturday after a two year hiatus because of the pandemic. And even though the temperature there was 16 degrees at the parade start, you could see there was still a very enthusiastic turnout. It also marked a return for another beloved Milwaukee tradition, the dancing grannies. All right, the troupe performed for the first time since three other members were killed during that Christmas parade in Wisconsin. I trust our leaders here because everybody loves the dancing grannies. Nobody wants to see <laughs> any more, you know, tragedy with the dancing grannies. Absolutely do not want to see that. So members of the Dancing Granny say it is very important to them that they perform Saturday so they could honor their fallen members. And though it may have been the coldest parade many have ever worked, the crowd's receptions definitely helped keep everybody warm. All Max. right, RJ Marquez, thank you so much. Thanks, Max. Time now just about 640, 32 degrees out still ahead on GMSA. Frozen meals, yes, they are super convenient, especially if you're trying to feed the family quickly right after school. But coming up, we're going to go over some of the most popular frozen foods that dietitians say you should avoid. And I got to tell you, everything feels frozen out there right now. 32 degrees right now. What is the rest of the weekend? What is a work week or what does spring break look like? We're going to check in with Mike Osterhage in just a few minutes. Good morning and welcome back. Yes, we're in the middle of March, so you know. St. Patty's Day is coming. It's coming up on Thursday. Wallet Hub, a personal finance website, they have released their report on the top cities for St. Patty's Day celebrations. So here they are. Top three cities, Philadelphia, Boston, and Pittsburgh. San Antonio, we are listed at number 145 out of 200. So to determine the best cities for celebrating St. Patrick's Day, Wallet Hub compared 200 of the largest U.S. cities across 18 key metrics. Those metrics range from Irish pubs and restaurants per capita to the lowest price for a three-star hotel on St. Patrick's Day to even, yes, the weather, and that is where our Mike Oster H comes in. So, Mike? I wonder where Chicago is on that Because they've got a you know, lot of St. Oh, Bays yeah, they have the they huge parade, the and like us, they, what'd you say, Alex? She's our okay, producers. we're going to let you know after Mike's forecast. But yes, like us, they dye their river green. Yeah. All right, and here's a quiz question for you. Oh. 
Chicago's Chicago number four, four, just outside the top three. That makes sense. What is the official color of Ireland? Emerald green. Blue. Is that why we're wearing blue today? Uh, sure, but yeah, it is. It's uh, the actual color of Ireland is blue. So look at that. And Fun facts with Mike Osage. St. Patrick, of course, the patron saint, took the snakes out of Ireland, drove the snakes out of Ireland, which is the, the lore behind that. So more St. Patty's Day. <laughs> Irish, Irish, well done. Laura coming up here in just a minute. Um, anyway, uh, tomorrow morning as we are getting ready this morning, very, very cold. It's not going to be as cold tomorrow morning. We'll have a few more clouds hanging around here and then throughout the day tomorrow is going to be getting up to 80. So uh, jacket in the morning, kids won't need it in the afternoon with uh, partly cloudy skies. That is again is tomorrow and then this morning. Darn it, my little picture is not working for me here, but we are going to have a beautiful sunrise eventually. And sun doesn't come up for probably about another hour or so after the uh, time change. We are now into daylight saving time. And another one on that, it is not plural. It is daylight saving time, not savings. Anyway, I'm just full of th this morning, aren't I? Fun fact, I always mess up the daylight saving time thing, though. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's one of those common mistakes. All right, 24 in Kerrville, 20 curve, uh, 20 in Comfort, 31 here in town. A lot of freezing readings around here. It is not unheard of to have freezes this late in the season, but it is very rare because, of course, the average last freeze is February 24th, so we're well past that. But the latest, of course, we've ever hit freezing here in town is on April 3rd. All right, we've got a lot of clear skies out there. This was the air that we had yesterday, this darker shade of gray upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's why it was just that absolutely spectacular shade of blue in the sky. And there may be perhaps a little bit not as intense of a blue sky today. Slight milky shade, as I like to say, but I mean, that's split in here is it's going to be fantastic. All right, tomorrow, jumping ahead again, there is a fire weather watch that has been issued for western portions of the hill country. So we have a dry front moving on through here. Man, it may touch off a shower well off to the east, but it is technically a cold front, but it's not really going to pull in that much colder air. It's just going to really knock the humidity down. And so out to the west, we're going to have about 9% relative humidity, bone dry air coming in here, and the gusts of, are going to be up to about 30, 35 miles per hour out there to the west. And so that's why the fire weather watch has been issued for our extreme western counties that may get bumped up by tomorrow into a red flag warning. As far as the humidity this morning, one of the reasons why we are so cold is because we have very dry air in place. And it's going to stay very nice all day long. But then overnight, the humidity starts to come back up around here, and that's going to help out with some of those clouds, uh, not allow us to get as cool. And then watch out to the west. There's the front moving on through. So that's why in the afternoon, we're still going to have some humidity here in town. But out to the west, that front moves through, brings in that very, very dry air, and hence the higher fire danger out there to the west. Then that drier air comes on in here for Tuesday. So what this means is we are going to have some just gorgeous days and cool mornings and then warm afternoons. As the front moves through, as I mentioned, it may try to touch off a couple of showers. This is late tomorrow night into Tuesday, um, perhaps along 35 and down to the southeast from there. That's going to be, I think, the exception rather than the rule. So today, gorgeous day, coat this morning. Might want to keep it handy throughout the rest of today. 56 degrees, sunny and breezy with that breeze and temperatures in the mid 60s, especially in the shadows, going to be kind of a nip in the air and then plenty of sunshine out there. Then tomorrow it's not going to be as cold in the morning. We're going to be dropping down to 50 with some clouds around. Then we'll see sunshine in the afternoon. That front moves through. Again, it may squeeze out a shower thunderstorm, especially off to the east and northeast. Then in behind that, it's going to be breezy and breezy on Tuesday. Lows, um, cool highs are going to be warm, plenty of sunshine. And for St. Patty's Day on <laughs> Thursday, we're looking at a high temperature of 82 <laughs> degrees. Beautiful. Perfect parade weather. Thanks. Speaking was... of which, can you believe Fiesta's only a couple weeks away? Yeah, Fiesta, Fiesta, that will kick off on that Thursday night is, I think, two weeks from Thursday. Wow. Yeah. Snuck up on us. I know. Right. Great. It's great, though, that it's back. Oh, yeah. In where it usually is. So. Mike Ostrich, thank you so much. Time now, 648, 32 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Getting frozen meals at the store is often the ticket to a much faster prep time for dinner at home. Most of you watching, and myself, we all love frozen foods, but 
There are some frozen foods that nutritionists say you should stay away from. RJ Marquez joining us again with the details. RJ, what should we know? Oh man, frozen food. I'm with you though, Max. I do like frozen foods, obviously the convenience of it, but uh, apparently some not, uh, not some great reports here. Oh you know, no. Some frozen foods. We'll discuss it here. So whether it's Hot Pockets, Frozen pizza or lean cuisine, all of us have probably used the convenience of frozen food. That section at the grocery store, but many dietitians agree there are several popular items you should try to stay away from, and most of them have the problem of having just too much salt. So first of all, pizza roll uh. snacks, Bummer, bummer, my childhood. Pizza rolls. <laughs> Taking a major hit here. Okay, so according to an article in New York Post, dietitians say that these kind of snacks are nothing like a real slice of pizza. Which also isn't the healthiest. Yes, that, no, and we'll talk about that one here in a little while. They're often, so pizza rolls we're talking about, often soaked with sodium, fat, and lots of preservatives, and even imitation cheese. Why would they do that to us? <laughs> While they do recommend real pizza over pizza rolls, it's still not much of an endorsement, as pizza can still have have, as we mentioned, lots of fats loaded with calories. The imitation cheese, that's the one that really just <laughs> bugs me for some reason. Pizza rolls were like a luxury growing up. They were. Dude, yeah. pizza rolls, like something went right. Yeah. There was, yeah. and pizza bagels, that was another one. Pizza bagel. Mike Ozer, hey, just threw knot in his head. Yep. Yeah. Super easy thing to get if you have some buddies around and mm -hmm. yeah, you just want to get some food in the microwave, but uh, apparently not the greatest. No. Is it going to stop you from eating? For right now, stuff? yes, but okay. younger Max, when I had a faster <laughs> metabolism, didn't care. If younger Max could have talked to older Max about pizza rolls, this is uh, what he'd be saying right now. Okay, so moving on here. How about frozen <laughs> pot pies? Okay. Okay. One of my dad's favorites. I was never a big pot pie guy. Mm. There was just too much going on. You know what? Same here. My dad too. Really big pot pie fan. Okay. Mike so Ozerich, given like a five, yeah, six. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so even though these contain some vegetables and protein in the form of chicken, dietitians say they can be one of the highest calorie and fat containing frozen foods. Not great. They say the amount of calories and fat in these can lead to weight gain and other health problems. Okay. This one really, really hurts me. I mean, this one really gets me. Frozen corn dogs. That's a tough one for me. I, yeah. I could still definitely uh, eat Throw them down. Yeah. Dogs. yeah. Okay, so while they can be popular with kids and an easy meal, dietitians say that corn dogs not only have highly processed meat, but it's wrapped in sugary batter. Isn't that Isn't the that best part, though? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's the point. Uh, sugary <laughs> batter coating that has no real nutrients. Mm. So, thoughts on these two. All right, so here's the thing. Like we're going to we're going to go back and forth, but yes, at the end of the day, they're clearly not healthy. I yeah. uh, try to avoid these, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, anyone who's trying to be healthy probably isn't going to buy corn dogs anyway. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Okay, so moving on to frozen baked goods. Oh, we're we're here. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cinnamon rolls, biscuits, waffles, these are typically loaded with salt, sugar, and fat. Oh man, health professions, health professionals say the items like these should not be in, in a stable in someone's diet, even though they are convenient as a quick breakfast item. I push back on waffles. I definitely like me a good frozen waffle just to put the in the ego. Yes. The yes. ego waffle, my entire childhood. Getting up like right before school, you throw it in the toaster for two minutes, yeah. run There's out the door. Peanut butter on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, See, that's kind of healthy because protein. It's a little bit healthier. Yeah. Okay. Tell on there too. All right. Well, you lost Mike. me with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mike coming through here. Yeah. Okay. You turn the waffle into a Reese's cup real fast. Yeah. <laughs> and you're and you're probably course, guys. Guys, not all frozen foods are terrible. Dietitians <laughs> say frozen vegetables and fruits and chicken are smarter choices. Just watch out for too much sodium, which I hear. Yeah, a lot of too much sodium. Not a great thing. But I don't know. Not gonna give it the waffles. Just taking a stand right now. Yeah. All right. Our team Marquez. is a good thing. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> 656, 32 degrees out. We'll be right back. We were just talking about things that still probably aren't the healthiest for you. So uh, brought up spam and eggs. So yes. The egg low sodium spam. The low, low sodium. <laughs> so if you want to be a little healthier, the sun is starting to peak over the horizon right now. And it's going to be just a gorgeous day. It's cold out there. We're down to 30 right now, 20 in comfort. And throughout the rest of today, absolutely spectacular. 64. It's going to be breezy today. And then we do have a front moving through late tomorrow night. That comes through earlier in the day. Fire weather watch for our extreme western counties tomorrow afternoon. And then, yeah, for folks that have spring break this week, wonderful weather. All right. Cool mornings, nice afternoon. So, Mike Ostridge, thank you so much. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry. Back here at 8 a.m., Mike, join us. We have spam and eggs. 
Now, I can't make that promise. We it's might. It's got to be a little crisp. A little it's crisp. Gotta, it's got to be yes. a little crisp. Love that. And it's low sodium. <laughs> We're going to be talking about gas prices, inflation, how we got here, and Spurs. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man shot and killed right outside of a local burger spot. We have the latest, including the victim's name and the search for the suspects. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, the sun is out, but the temperature is down 31 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the day? What is the weekend? What does your spring break look like? We're going to check in with Mike Oserage in just a bit. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, March 13th. Thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. So, Mike, I got to tell you, the tale of two spring breaks. Last week, a lot of people had spring break. It was cold, a little gloomy out there, but today the sun is out and it looks like it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be fantastic. It already is fantastic looking out there, but it is once again very, very cold. And that little thermometer right down there at the bottom of your screen right there has not quite yet updated because, mm. well, beautiful start. We're at 29 now here in town, 19 in comfort. Set a new record low temperature up in Austin, got down to a 20 earlier this morning. Yeah. It is cold out there. It's not unheard of to have freezing temperatures this late in the season, but um, it is way past the average last freeze, which is uh, late February. Mold, juniper, elm, oak are all on the low side. Clear cold this morning. I bundle up, and that's the one, one thing we're dealing with now with the time change, because usually by this time of the morning when the sun would be a little bit higher up in the sky, because the sun just rose about 15 minutes ago, uh, we would already start the warming process, but now usually in a situation like this, the cold this time of the morning is right as the sun is coming up because it hasn't had a chance to uh, really start to warm things up yet. So yeah, it stays a little colder later on in the morning now. Uh, clear cold today and then sunny, breezy, beautiful day today. If you're in the shadows, you might want to keep a jacket handy because temperatures are going to be in the mid 60s. We're still going to be we're going to be warmer than yesterday's mid 50s. Still not up to a normal high. Now the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here late tonight. We'll have some clouds starting off tomorrow. It's not going to be anywhere near as cold and there's a front that moves through late tomorrow. It may touch off a shower off to the east. One or two of them, unfortunately, rain's not a big chance, not a big deal. And then, as Max was alluding to, spring break this week, we're going to have some cool mornings, beautiful afternoons. Talk all about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. A lot happening overnight. So new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a two vehicle crash that ended with one person dead and both drivers possibly facing some serious charges. Our Jonathan Coto joining us live. Jonathan, can you give us an update? Good morning, Max. That's right. And both drivers are also claiming they had the green light when crossing at an intersection of Petrenko near 151. Police are telling us that the driver of a black pickup truck T-boned a driver of a silver vehicle that was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. This happening close to 2 o'clock this morning. The passenger inside the silver vehicle was pronounced dead at the scene. They say both drivers will be evaluated for driving under the influence. If if charged, they could be facing uh, some serious charges, bo both of them included. But that's the information we have right now. Of course, we'll keep you updated as more information is received. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Another crash overnight. This one also deadly. This one on the northwest side involving a wrong way driver. So police tell us a man was headed east in the westbound lanes of Bandera Road. That wrong way driver crashing head on into another vehicle at Ford's Landing. The wrong way driver dying on impact. The driver of the other vehicle, which was hit, rushed to the hospital at last check in serious condition. Officers there on the scene, they had to shut down the westbound lanes of Bandera for a few hours. We are expecting more updates throughout the day, so once we have them, make sure to check on air and online at KSAT.com. Also new this morning, we now know the name of the man who was shot and killed just outside a west side restaurant and what police tell us was an attempted carjacking. Police tell us 48 year old Juan Medina shot and killed right outside the Good News Burgers, formerly known as Papa's Burgers. This is the 900 block of Southwest 36th Street. Investigators say Medina was leaving the restaurant. He was walking to his truck in the parking lot. Two men approached him. Some sort of altercation happened. Medina was shot and he died on the scene. As for those responsible, the two suspects ran off. Police say they were interviewing several witnesses and they are still searching for the people responsible. 
All right, so we've recently seen record high gas prices and the highest inflation that we've seen in our country for the last 40 years. So what does that mean for your family and how exactly did we get here? In today's Leading SA segment, Monic Dillon with Victory Capital joining us live. There you go. Good morning, Monica. How are you doing today? Good morning, Max. Good to see you. You as well. So we're going to start off with the inflation numbers. The latest consumer price index inflation numbers came in last week. It showed 7.9% year-over-year increase. Can you break that down? Does that mean basically life is about 8% more expensive now than it was last year? Fortunately, Max, uh, th that is exactly what it means. Uh, the consumer price index, or CPI as it's called, tracks a basket of goods and services that we all have to consume or we, we normally consume on an everyday basis. I mean, these are things like food, energy, transportation costs, even some healthcare services. Um, and and energy is a big component of it. And as we've seen lately, that's been a big driver of the consumer price index increasing and what you saw in that 7.9% uh, number. And uh, it's that component has increased over 25% year over year, the energy component. So it is pretty meaningful and it impacts the bottom line of uh, all San Antonians. Now you just talked about the gas prices, which we're gonna to get to in a moment, but you hear the different reasons for why this recent rise of inflation from the February numbers. So from your perspective, why are we seeing this number? And you know, isn't this the highest we've seen since the 1980s? Yes, it's, uh, it, it's pretty high. It's increasing quickly as well. You know, you have to think back to Econ 101. Uh, it's supply and demand. Prices follow supply and demand forces, and, and both, you know, decreasing supply and increasing demand can push those prices up. And unfortunately, what's happening since the bottoms of the pandemic is both of those things are happening, right? We're, we're, we're facing global supply chain issues that are decreasing supply, while demand is still up and increasing post uh, the pandemic lows. And so that's pushing prices up. The other thing is, you, we all hear about the Federal Reserve and what are they doing in terms of interest rates and the easing that they put into place uh, to help the economy during the pandemic has also pushed up demand and that increases prices over time. And then we can't ignore the fact that energy prices, particularly as of late, have been impacted uh, by the conflict um, that's happening between Russia and Ukraine. Look at that. You started to broach the next subject before we even got there. So like you said, gas prices reaching record highs. Obviously, a lot of families feeling a pain at the pump. So is there a direct correlation between the war in Ukraine and what people are seeing at the pump? There is. In the days leading up to and after the invasion, we saw energy prices particularly spike. But let's not forget, we've been seeing energy prices and gasoline prices tick up for some time, actually. This is not a new phenomenon in the last few weeks. And uh, right now, though, however, because of the conflict, curbing Russian imports of oil impacts the supply of oil globally. And, and while we in the United States may not be a big consumer of Russian oil, oil is a global market and it pushes up those input prices. What you see at the pump most of that is actually oil. I mean, there's other taxes and things that get baked in as, as oil turns into gasoline, but it is correlated. Now, other than Russia and Ukraine, what are some of the other reasons that we're seeing the, the gas prices tick up? Like you mentioned, we saw it before the actual initial invasion. Yeah, so with, with the increased demand because of the, the easing stance of the Federal Reserve and everybody coming back out of the pandemic, right? People coming back into the offices, traveling more, uh, that increases the the demand for for fuel and so that's why it's been ticking up up until even the the recent conflict and and that's something we have to pay attention to uh as we think about you know where do we go from here again talking about the next subject we before we even got there so like you said though a lot of supply and demand before the actual invasion in ukraine leading to these ticked up gas prices so that asks a lot, the next question you know so many families are wondering now, is this inflation going to continue? Are these gas prices ever going to ease anytime soon from your perspective? I know it's very difficult to predict the future, but what are you guys thinking? So we we all expect the Federal Reserve to increase rates um, to help tamp down inflation. The question will be how fast of an effect that hap uh, takes. You know, the conflict in, in Russia, the longer it continues, um, the supply of global oil is going to be impacted. So that's 
that's not going to change probably unless there's resolution there and we and the the world gets back to consuming and putting russian oil back into the market market likes certainty over uncertainty always then the other thing though is demand so we are entering into you know the summer months uh gasoline consumption and and demand increases then so it, it may not be um it may not be an immediate uh, relief you know ahead from an inflation perspective particularly the energy prices all right so it still could be a few more months absolutely unfortunately all right monic dillon victory capital thank you so much thanks max time now 8 10 29 degrees out a lot still ahead here on gmsa the deadline is this week to enter our porch parade contest what do you need to do and what can you win we're going to explain in just a bit and after a historic night here at home oh what happened last night hosting the pacers rj marquez joining us in studio breaking down everything you need to know spurs related and taking a live look out of the alamo city gorgeous sunrise to start your sunday morning temps a little colder than we would like but what is the rest of the day when will we see those temps rise we're gonna check in with mike in just a bit Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 8.14 this morning, and we have our own Mike Osterhage in today. Thank you, Mike. Oh, certainly. Yes, indeed. Always happy to fill in on a weekend with you. Oh, yeah, and you know what? It's funny because our ties, I did coordinate with you on purpose, uh, our ties kind of matched your uh, temperature chart this morning. <laughs> yeah, you can stand outside long enough, your lips are going to be turning blue because, yeah, it is cold out there this morning. Once again, like yesterday, you know, we hit uh, 26. We're already down to 29 degrees. All right, I don't know if you've been watching for about the past week or or so, but one of our dedicated viewers, Skywatcher, has taken some beautiful pictures of the moon and it is in the waxing gibbous stage. It's going to be full on Friday. However, along with these beautiful pictures, he also throws in some really good puns and I love these. Today's says, why is the moon almost always hungry? Because it's hardly ever full. Aww. <laughs> Try the moon pie. Thank you very much, sir. He actually emailed me last week and said, hey, I'm going on vacation, but I'll still send the puns in here, the dad joke. So yeah. thank you very much for that, Sky Watcher. All right. Speaking of the sky, it is gorgeous out there. Sun just came up about uh, roughly a half an hour ago, and obviously we've got lots of clear skies going on. Temperatures right now, Comfort 19, 29 New Braunfels, right at freezing at Stinson, and yeah, cold out there. Not much of a breeze, got mostly clear skies, pretty dry air, light wind, perfect radiational cooling situation. And as far as moisture aloft in the atmosphere, I've seen a couple of high wispy clouds this morning so far, and that's what we're going to be seeing throughout the day. This little bit of uh, kind of a medium shade of gray, the darker shade in case drier air. That's what we had yesterday with that intense blue sky out there, but uh, one or two you know, high level clouds out there, uh, kind of a milky shade of the sky at times. All right, tomorrow, Fire weather watch has been issued for our extreme western counties. Winds going to be gusting about 30 miles per hour, and then the humidity is going to be down to about 9%. I mean, just bone dry air is going to be working its way on in here, and so that's what's prompting that higher fire danger. Today, very low humidity all around the area. Then overnight, with the wind coming in here out of the southeast, the humidity is going to start to pick up, and so that's not going to allow us to get as cold tomorrow morning. It's going to stay about 50. We'll have some more clouds around tomorrow morning as well. Then during the day, the front starts to work its way into the hill country. Now, this is not really a big batch of cold air. It's just really dry air that's coming on in here. So with these dew points dropping down, therefore the relative humidity really drops down and that's what's prompting that fire danger out to the west. Then that front's going to move through in the wee hours and tomorrow night into Tuesday. Now, as it comes through, it may try to squeeze out a couple of showers. Um, the chances of rain are not that likely. Here's the model going into later on tomorrow night. Perhaps one or two of them. Most are going to be further up to the north and east, and most everybody not going to see anything as far as any rain is concerned. And that's one of the problems with the forecast. Even though we have got a great looking week ahead, I mean, it is gorgeous. We're going to have, once that front moves through, gets rid of some of the humidity, we have cool mornings, warm afternoons. Temperatures are going to be going up a good 30, 35, 40 degrees from the low to the high. Beautiful spring break weather. But not a drop of rain in that forecast, which that's getting to be a problem around here. Of course, we are in stage one water restrictions as of last week. 56 degrees today at noon. Sunny, breezy, nice, nice day. Get out and enjoy. You might want to keep a jacket handy just because 64 if you get in the shadows with that breeze could be a little bit uh, nippy out there. And then tomorrow it's not going to be as cold in the morning. 
We will stay at 50 with some clouds hanging around. The front moves through. We'll see sunshine in the afternoon. Front moves through, of course, first in the hill country. That prompts that uh, fire weather watch. And then overnight tomorrow night, maybe, maybe a stray shower or two. And then 75 Tuesday back to the 80s throughout uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Look at that, 42 up to 82. We gained 40 degrees throughout the day on Wednesday. Really, really dry air, really comfortable. Notwithstanding the fact we need some rain, but can't have that. Great looking weather and on St. Patty's Day. You don't want to put on the accent? St. Patrick's Day. Very nice. Thank you very much. Very nice. All right, Mike goes ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs> and RJ Marquez, join us dark and early this morning. Oh, yeah, guys. Up early with y'all. Very glad to be with you guys this morning on GMSA. We're talking Spurs, so mm -hmm. let's check out some of the action here. Oh, yes. Yeah, popping the Spurs. Of course, taking in that moment from Friday night, celebrating him becoming the winningest coach in NBA history, being a very good jazz team. But hey, you know what? That's all over. It's back to business. And here are how things went against the Indiana Pacers early on. Doug McDermott giving the Spurs a nice little lead there as they went up pretty early, 6-0. And then we see Jock Lendell getting a few nice buckets inside. But uh, Indiana is a very tough team. As you can see right there, Indiana, the Pacers ended up taking an early lead here, 34-26 after one. How about Devin Vassell? Look at my man rocking the rim right there. And then we got Primo hitting Kata Bates D op for a nice jam. Spurs attacking the rim, but they still end up trailing this one 71 to 64 at the break. All right, so you jump straight to the fourth quarter. Spurs trying to stay close. They are down 15 for the second straight night, but El Cuatro, Lonnie Walker, the fourth, hits down the three to cut that lead to 11. He ended up scoring 20 points off the bench a few minutes later. How about Josh Richardson, the new guy, coming up with a steal, flips it ahead to Jock Landale for another slam on the break. Landale posted a team high 26 points last night. Richardson had 16. But Indiana would not let go of this lead. Tyrese Halliburton led the Pacers with 19 points, and they win this one, 119 to 108. Uh, I think we worked hard, but we weren't we weren't really that sharp. Uh, you know, we didn't shoot very well. Uh, just weren't very sharp. But we worked hard, didn't give in, just didn't play well. Bottom line, it happens. All right, Pop, well, maybe a little exhausted after Friday night's uh, celebration there, but the Spurs are back on the courts tomorrow night, trying to turn things around. They host the Minnesota Timberwolves tip off set for 730 p.m. And Max, I know the Spurs still mm -hmm. in the hunt here. They are playing game. No, does anyone want this last playing spot here in the Western? Wow. <laughs> well, I, I'm pretty sure the Blazers, it's the Pelicans and Blazers. Yeah, Portland's kind of already throwing in right, the Right, but they still have a better record That's than the true. Spurs. Is, I don't know what that says about the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, so there is yeah. still a chance that we could see the postseason here with the Spurs. Okay. Good. All right. RJ, we're going to see you out a lot throughout the morning. Thank you so much. Exactly. Time now, 821, 30 degrees out. All right. We've told you before, we'll tell you again, we are looking for the best of the best when it comes to decorators in and around San Antonio. We're talking about our porch parade contest, and the winner gets a party live on TV. Stay with us. We're going to explain. Good morning. Welcome back. If you plan to be out and about this morning, a couple of traffic alerts to tell you about two closures happening today, one on the southwest side, one on the north side. So first, there is a rolling lane closure of I-35 just south of Loop 410. CPS crews are going to be doing some utility work. Traffic will be stopped intermittently. It started at 7 a.m. and it will go to 4 p.m. intermittently, meaning 15-minute intervals. Then on the north side, TxDOT is going to have the eastbound 1604 flyover ramp to northbound 281 closed. That also started at 7 a.m. This one's going to go to 5 p.m. and this is for construction work. In that area, traffic will be detoured to the frontage road. So if you are out and about in that area, plan accordingly. All right, you just saw a commercial for it. Don't forget the porch parade contest. We're getting ready for Fiesta. It's just a couple weeks away. You can still join by decorating your porch, your door. Take a picture of it. Submit it to KSAT.com. The prizes are fantastic. Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, is the last day to enter the contest. The KSAT Porch Parade Party, say that 10 times fast, it's going to be live on March 25th from 8 to 10 p.m. prior to the kickoff of Fiesta, March 31st. You can find out all this information, so much more how, when to enter. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 826, 36, 32 degrees out. All right, women around San Antonio coming together 
to assist the women of Ukraine as they try to escape this chaotic situation. We have more on the global effort to support the mothers of war. But a lot happening overnight. We have deadly crashes and deadly shootings, one specifically on the east side that police are still investigating. We have all the details next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. Today is March 13th, but if you've been outside already, you probably think it was December, January, or even early February. Mike goes here to join us in the studio this morning. Mike, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So, we're still in the 30s, but yeah, we're out of the uh, 20s. Well, it's kind of fluctuating back and forth oh, a good. little bit because we did dip down to actually 28 degrees so far here uh, this morning. Now, got to jump ahead to tomorrow morning. Of course, it kind of, you know, people have to get all resituated since we had to set the clocks ahead and everything. Tomorrow morning is not going to be as cold. Still need a jacket. We'll have more clouds around here. The humidity is going to be coming up. And then throughout the day, won't need a jacket in the afternoon. Going to be up to 80 and partly cloudy skies. Then we have another uh, kind of a weak front moving through. We're going to talk more about that in a second. Back to the uh, current weather. It is an absolutely gorgeous start this morning. Lots of clear skies out there. Maybe a couple of high wispy clouds. That's going to be about it. Still at 29 degrees officially out there at the airport. Set a new record down to 20 up at uh, Austin. Comfort within the hour was down to uh, 19 degrees. Now back up to uh, 20 and 27 in Seguin. Yeah. It is a cold, cold morning. We've got all these really, really cold temperatures out there. And then there's a bit of a breeze to deal with. So we haven't had much of a wind, and that's allowed these temperatures to drop down. But the wind chill right now is 23 out there at the airport. Yeah, definitely bundle up or just put the covers back over your head. Mold, juniper, elm, and oak are all on the low side and throughout the rest of today. Gorgeous day, plenty of sunshine. Going to make it up to 64. It is going to be breezy, however, so you might want to keep a jacket or a sweatshirt handy, something like that. And then if you picked, uh, if you lucked out to have spring break this upcoming week, going to be really nice spring break weather. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, gunfire at a home east of downtown. San Antonio police investigating through the morning. Uh, we know one person is dead. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Good morning, Jonathan. What have we been able to learn? Good morning, Max. Well, we've learned the suspect involved in the shooting was still inside that home when police arrived. He was taken into custody. Police tell us they were called out to that home on Lamar Street, located east of downtown around 1130 last night. They say inside that home, they found a man shot in the living room. And again, the suspect involved in the shooting still inside the home when police arrived. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene, Max. We've also learned the weapon was recovered. And detectives are questioning the suspect at this time. Charges are pending. We'll update you as more information is received. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Not the only shooting that police are investigating this morning. Uh, we are told another man shot and killed after an argument escalated to gunfire on the northwest side. Investigators tell us two men arguing in the 6400 block of Northwest Loop 1604. One of them pulled out a gun and shot the other. Now that suspect took off the victim, taken to the hospital in critical condition, and that's where he died a short time later. Police tell us the suspect left the scene in a white vehicle. They are still investigating, and at last check, still no arrests. Well, family and friends mourning the loss of their loved one. 32-year-old Corey Vernon killed in a crash on I-10 near Tapper One back on March 3rd. Yesterday, an outpouring of support and a celebration of his life. Live Oak Police telling us Vernon's life cut short when he was riding his motorcycle to work just before 7 a.m. He and another car tried merging into the same lane of an 18-wheeler. Vernon and that car crashed. His loved ones describe him as a jokester, a family mediator, a mechanic, and everyone's go-to problem solver. Corey was larger than life. Everything about him, he smiled constantly. Corey's personality was flamboyant and bold and kind. He would stop and do anything for anybody. At last check, the crash still under investigation, but as of today, no one involved has been charged. Well, yesterday, the 32nd annual San Antonio International Women's Day March it was held and it marked its return after a two year break because of the pandemic. Organizers there saying this year's March slogan, we will not be moved. It honors the legacy of local and global strikes in defense of urban and agricultural workers' rights. Marchers also say health care, housing, information and education, migration and nutrition. They're all human rights and the event meant to lift up visions of justice in local and global communities.
We're here to demand and stand in solidarity with all the different oppressions um, that we all need to fight together. Organizers say this is the longest running annual march in San Antonio that is not commissioned by the city. All right, in your morning headlines, an Iraqi and U.S. officials say as many as 12 separate missiles hitting near a U.S. consulate complex in northern Iraq in what is likely a strike launched from Iran. Luckily, no injuries reported in the attack, which does mark a significant escalation between the United States and Iran. Hostility between our two longtime foes played out in Iraq. Remember, the Iraqi government is allied with both of our nations. All right, images of grace amid the hardship of Ukraine's refugees. Mothers around the world, they are watching women carrying their children to safety, carrying them miles, hundreds of miles, forced to leave everything behind. In response, they're sending a bit of comfort for mothers and children and children in strollers. ABC's Ines de la Catera has the story. It's an image that's been seen around the world. Rows of strollers lining a platform at a train station near Poland's border with Ukraine, left there by Polish mothers for their Ukrainian counterparts. That image inspiring a sea of more stroller donations for women and children fleeing war-torn Ukraine, awaiting mothers like 19-year-old Polina, who fled the war in Donbass with little else than her four-month-old baby in her arms. We heard bombs next to our home and the windows broke, she says. It's my first time traveling without my husband. With their husbands having to stay behind and fight, the strollers providing some welcome relief. The baby girl was in my arms the whole time, she says, and it was very difficult and heavy. The movement spreading across Poland from Warsaw to Krakow and now across Europe. Polish mothers like Marzena and Barbara, just some of the women behind the effort, organizing on Facebook. We see with, uh, in television and we hear in the radio what, uh, what happened. We say, OK, we can, we can help. Some of the moms even leaving handwritten notes behind. Words of support from one mother to another. We found this one from a Spanish family living in Singapore to an amazing woman. A child's writing on another. Dear Ukraine, I hope you cannot be attacked by Russia. Dear Ukraine, love you. Do you feel that Ukrainian women are kind of like sisters? I feel like a, uh, like a sister, yes. An act of humanity now providing hope and safety for these women and their children fleeing a war that has sent them far from home. That was Enos Delicatera reporting. Other headlines this morning. A man now in custody after selling drugs, allegedly selling drugs, to a group of West Point cadets that ended in several overdoses. And if you haven't heard, wild weather on the East Coast, leaving thousands without power. RJ Marquez back in the studio with these stories and much more. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, Max. And uh, starting there in Florida, not about the power, but this other story that has to do with spring break. Florida authorities there have arrested an alleged drug dealer connected to the suspected fentanyl overdoses of West Point cadets. So six men total, five who are cadets from West Point, were hospitalized after a spring break party. Broward County deputies arrested. You saw his photo right there. 21-year-old Axel Giovanni Cassius for selling fentanyl laced cocaine on Friday and Cassius did confess to dealing those cadets those drugs. Fort Lauderdale firefighters found the students unconscious at a vacation home on Thursday when they responded to an emergency call. Cassius is being held in the Broward County Jail on a $50,000 bond. And a somber anniversary this week as people in Atlanta are marking one year since a mass shooting at several massage businesses. More than 150 people came together this weekend to remember those victims. Family members and leaders of the Asian American community spoke Saturday at a memorial held at an Atlanta park. The shooting killed eight people in total. Six were women of Asian descent. The shootings also galvanized Atlanta's Asian American community to rally against prejudice and hate. Robert Aaron Long, that is the uh, person who uh, was convicted of some of those shootings, pled guilty to four of those murders outside the Atlanta area and has been sentenced to life without parole, but he has pleaded not guilty to the charges of the shootings that occurred inside the city, city limits there. The prosecutors are seeking the death penalty in that case. 
And back to Florida, where severe thunderstorms ripped through the central part of the state yesterday morning, knocking out power and causing extensive wind damage. Local police there say they believe a tornado touched down, but the National Weather Service will have to officially determine if there was a tornado or not. Residents have been through a lot here. More than 6,000 residents in one county were without power at one point, and a local airport in central Florida clocked winds topping 74 miles per hour. Authorities say a number of traffic lights were also knocked out due to severe weather damage. Damage. So far, there have not been any serious injuries reported. And Max, we also know this morning that a lot of flight delays and cancellations. So if people are heading out, just make sure to keep track of that. All right, RJ Marquez, thank you so much. Thanks, Time now, 840, 32 degrees out. A lot still ahead here on GMSA. All right, there's a way for you to have a piece of Coach Pop's amazing achievement. You can buy a collectible, but... It's actually a digital collectible. RJ Marquez is going to be joining us live once again, breaking it all down, what you need to know. And a celebration of life for fallen officers. We're going to explain in just a bit. But first, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. A gorgeous start to your Sunday morning. So what is the rest of the weekend? What does a work week look like? Mike Osterhage in with us dark and early this morning. Going to break it all down. Good morning from Lviv, Ukraine. Just ahead on a special edition of This Week, Russia is widening its attack on Ukraine, including overnight strikes at a military facility less than an hour from here. I'll talk with the governor of this region about the dramatic escalation of hostilities, plus Pentagon spokesman John Kirby about concerns Russia could use chemical weapons in a false flag attack. Both This Week exclusives. And I speak with Americans who've traveled to Ukraine to join the fight to save democracy. It's all coming up on a special edition of This Week. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. San Antonio Police Officers Association hosting their 10th annual Memorial Festival just yesterday. Not only celebrating the legacy of fallen officers, but also celebrating survivors' families right here in our community. So the day, it had a lot going on, fun activities, on-site vendors, and a car show. There you go. Car enthusiasts could appreciate community. This event is incredible. Honestly, we get so much support from the community. We have uh, businesses and organizations who contribute to this uh, to event every year, and we wouldn't be able to put it on uh, as we have for now a decade. Here's the best part. All of the funds raised from the festival goes to fund a trip for family members to visit Washington, D.C. to remember the fallen. All right. Well, taking a look at that video, Mike, no cloud in the sky, yeah. all blue out there, and it was gorgeous yesterday. It was fantastic. Notice how some folks still had a jacket on, though, because it was only cool. mid-50s yesterday. We're making up the mid-60s today. By the way, hats off to all the men and women in uh, in blue out there and first responders. Um, yeah, if you're out today with the breeze and then get in the shadows, probably want to keep a jacket handy. You definitely need one this morning. And by the way, spring officially begins one week from today, about 1030 in the morning, and... Yeah, here's to a little saluting the first signs of spring, but I'm sure a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of folks were like, wait, I, I just planted flowers, and then we hit a freeze again. So hopefully you did cover some of those uh, tender plants there. I don't, I don't think some of the trees know what's going on as far as uh, some of the, uh, the buds coming out. As far as the live cam. It's gorgeous out there. We have got plenty of sunshine, lots of clear skies, maybe a slight milky shade to the sky today. Just some excess moisture aloft in the atmosphere, but still it's going to be a prize winning sort of a day. Still 29 in town, 25 Balverde, 21 in Comfort. They've actually come up, uh, hit 19 just about an hour or so ago, and 27 in Seguin, and already smashed a record up in Austin. The old record was 25 degrees, dropped down to 20 thus far this morning. All right. Jumping ahead to tomorrow, there is a fire weather watch that has been issued for extreme western portions of the hill country. Very windy conditions, windier than today, and then also bone dry humidity. We have a front moving through late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. It's not a big shot of cold air. As a matter of fact, this week is actually going to be much more spring like to round out the, the official end or official last week of winter, but uh, it will pull in a lot drier air tomorrow afternoon. Here's what's going on with the humidity right now. We've got the wind is shifted around out of the south to southeast, and we'll still have comfortable air as far as the humidity is concerned today, but it's going to start to move 
move back into the picture and then really come back in here overnight. So that's going to help to keep because you can't drop down below what dew points are. And so that's going to help to keep temperatures up tomorrow morning. We're going to have some more clouds hanging around here tomorrow morning. Then that front starts to work in and by late afternoon it moves through the hill country. Wind picks up. Of course, these dew points really drop down. So therefore the relative humidity and it's still going to be coming in here early enough to where we'll have some heating in behind and that dryer heats up a lot more quickly also. So the relative humidity, like I said, is going to be extremely low out there in western portions of the hill country. And of course, goes without saying, haven't had anything as far as rain really to do any make any difference. And so that's why that fire weather watch is posted out in western portions of the hill country. Then the drier air comes on in here. That will allow low temperatures to dip down, so we'll have some cool mornings and then warm up very nicely. You know, we're going to see about a 35 degree swing in temperatures today, and that's pretty much going to be the case just about except for tomorrow just about every day this upcoming week where we'll have 35 40 degree swings from the low to the high. So it'll be jackets to shorts in the afternoon. Clear skies today. There's the clouds that move back in here throughout the morning hours. Sunshine in the afternoon. Here comes that front again. It's going to squeeze out a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm, especially off to the northeast and to the east, and that's going to be in the overnight hours early Tuesday. Wouldn't get excited about any rain with this front. But like I said, it will pull in some drier air, so we get those low temperatures to go back down into the 40s Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the high temperatures look at that on Wednesday up to 82 degrees. So we're going to see again a 40 degree jump in temperatures and we stay up in the 70s. So all of these numbers are above, unlike this past week, all these numbers are above their respective high temperatures. So I know a lot of folks last week with spring break are kind of going spring break. This is going to feel much more like spring uh, with these temperatures coming up this upcoming week. And then also we see the big drop in the humidity that will start to work its way back in here just a little bit toward the end of next week, but nothing Nothing too oppressive as far as uh, humidity is concerned. So today, 56 degrees, beautiful day. Get outside, enjoy it, open up the windows, and then a high temperature makes it up to 64. Sunny, it is going to be breezy today, however, so jacket's not a bad idea, sweatshirt, something like that. Tomorrow, we start off at 50, make it up to 80 in the afternoon. Front comes through, we'll have clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. Front comes through, maybe a couple of showers. I wouldn't get really excited about those rain chances. And then we dry out. And 42 Wednesday, 82 for a high. Thursday, St. Patrick's Day, just about the same situation. And yeah, really nice week coming up this week for the last few days of winter officially. Fantastic. Mike Ostrich, thank you so much. You know what we get to talk about right now? Sports. <laughs> kind sports. of. We get to talk about kind NFTs of. and yes. sports. Ah. Yeah. We were having a uh, conversation prior to this trying to explain it. It kind of hurts your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. But now we have the Spurs in digital form. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and as we just mentioned, you can now own a part of the Spurs history in digital form. Digital form. Tomorrow, the Spurs will release the Coach Popovich NFT collection. So the collection will feature a digital recreation of Pop's hand-drawn play cards that helped the Spurs win five NBA championships. I remember when I first walked into the film room and he had at least 20 different piles of these three by five cards. Before the game ever starts, he's in his office going over these things. He'll go through these cards for like hours <laughs> and look at them and, and pick different ones. Those are priceless to him. All right, so there are 1,336 of these NFTs available to match, of course, the coaching wins record that Pop broke on Friday night. So NFTs are non-fungible tokens, so basically think of this as owning digital art. The first five will be distinct one-on-one -on -one NFTs, so you're going to be able to get the hand-drawn collection and also Spurs court designs with the classic logos over the past 26 years that Pop has been on the bench. You have to sign up for an account to be able to buy these NFTs. This also benefits the San Antonio Food Bank. Pretty cool there. And we have more information on KSAT.com. Marco knocks him to the ground. The second one nails him while he's laying on the ground. The third one hits him just to make sure he got the point. This guy is a real-life Scott Sterling. 
Okay, what happened there? If you don't know who Scott Sterling is, uh, you seriously missed out, but that's why there's YouTube, right? And tonight on Instant Replay, Greg Simmons, the one and only Larry Ramirez, and Andrew Silly will celebrate 29 years of Instant Replay being on the air. You don't want to miss this. They'll also get you ready for March Madness. Tonight is Selection Sunday, so watch Instant Replay tonight at 11 p.m. right after the night beat. And we will be right back.